Welcome to the Bookkeeping for Farmers Using QuickBooks video series. This video was developed by the Center for Land-Based Learning with funding and support from California FarmLink and USDA Risk Management Agency. In this video, we will talk about how to enter transactions in QuickBooks. Once you have set up your chart of accounts, and once you have established your checking account, you can start tracking transactions in QuickBooks. Your QuickBooks checking account register has to match your real bank account exactly, so each transaction that happens in real life in your bank account has to also be logged in your QuickBooks register. You will log checks that you have written, online payments that you have scheduled or that happen automatically, your debit card transactions. If you use a credit card for your business, your QuickBooks credit card register has to match the activity on your credit card exactly. You will enter expenses that you charge to your credit card. You will enter payments that you make to pay down your credit card balance. And you will enter credits that you receive on returned items. Let's talk first about checks. There are many ways to enter a new check into your check register. First, open the register you want to use. Then, place the cursor in a new line. Then, you have more options. Click Command-N to open a new check window. You can also go to the menu bar and select Edit New Check. Or, on the toolbar, click Checks. Or lastly, place the cursor into a new empty line and click Splits. This model chart of accounts that we have provided you with has an already established bank account called Checking Account. You should name it something that makes sense to you. For example, you could call it B of A Checking, Credit Union Checking. I am going to call it Business Checking. There are many ways to enter transactions into your Checking Account. First, open the register by double-clicking on it. Then place the cursor in a new line, if it isn't already, and click Command-N. Command is the clover symbol to the left of the spacebar. This will open the Write Checks window. You can also go to Edit, New Check. It opens the same window. Or you can go to Checks, and it will open this window. Lastly, you can place the cursor into a new line and click Splits. You can enter a transaction like this, but I don't recommend it. The other interface is easier to use. Now let's enter a new transaction. Let's say that you buy a shovel for $20 from Ace Hardware with a check. A shovel is a farming cost that will be assigned to the account Hand Tools. Pick a way to open the Write Checks window. I will click on the Checks icon on the toolbar. A new check window opens. At the top, we can see that we're in the correct register. Now let's enter the check number, which is going to be 102. I can click into a field to enter new information, but I can also just tab through each field with the tab key. That's the key to the left of the queue on the keyboard. Tab, 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 tab. And it takes us back to where we started. Now we enter 102 and then tab to the date. Today's date is fine, then tab again to the payee. We're going to enter Ace Hardware. Ah, QuickBooks can't find the payee. That's because we have not created it yet. We will go more in depth about creating vendors and customers later, but let's let the program quick add this payee for now. So I'll say yes. The only thing QuickBooks wants to know is what type of payee this is, and Ace is a vendor to us, so I click OK. The amount of the payment is $20. The account is Farming Costs Hand Tools. I can select it with the down arrow. have to scroll all the way down. But if I start typing, QuickBooks autofills it for me. tab. You can add a memo if you want. I really like memos. We 
And we'll talk about customer jobs, billable, and class later. For now, these things are not important. Then either hit Enter or click Save. QuickBooks is ready for the next check to enter, but if we close this window, you can see the transaction appeared in the register. To enter online payments or debit card charges, you can use the same method, but skip the check number. For example, say you charge to your debit card $67 to Tractor Supply for chicken feed. Chicken feed would be tracked under the account Farming Costs Feed. This time, let's click Command N to open the Write Checks window. Just delete the check number that QuickBooks automatically fills in for you, and fill out the rest of the transaction. Tab. Delete. Today's date is fine. Tractor Supply. QuickBooks recognizes the vendor and auto-fills it for me. I don't have to finish typing it. Tab. $67. Tab, tab, tab to the account. Again, I can search it with the down arrows, but I can also just start typing. Tab. And save. Voila! You've entered a debit card transaction. If we close that window, you can see that it's been entered right here. The only difference between a check and a debit card transaction is that one has a check number and the other one does not. An online payment would be entered the exact same way as a debit card charge, just again remember to delete the check number. There are many ways to enter a new credit card charge in your credit card register. Open the register you want to use, place the cursor in a new line, and click Command N, or go to the menu bar and select Edit New Credit Card Charge, or on the toolbar, click Credit Cards. You can also place the cursor in a new empty line and click Splits, and enter the transaction directly from the register, but this is not recommended. This chart of accounts has a credit card account already created for you. You should customize it to something that makes sense to you. I will call it Costco Credit Card. Now, let's say that we charged 107.33 on this credit card for seeds with Johnny selected seeds on December 20th. To enter a new charge, first open the credit card register. Then either click Command N. or go to Edit, New Credit Card Charge, or on the toolbar, click Credit Cards. To enter the transaction, we can see that we're in the correct credit card account, in case you have more than one. Enter the payee, Johnny's. QuickBooks autofills it, I don't have to keep typing, and I tab forward to the date. To enter the date, you have three ways of doing it. You can click on the calendar to select a date, the 20th. You can enter the date manually, so 12, 20, 19. Or, and this is my favorite way, you can press the plus and minus keys on your keyboard and QuickBooks automatically goes up and down a day each time you press it. So if I press plus or minus, I can get to the date I want from the date that was already in there. Now tab through. For your purposes, you can skip the reference number, enter the amount, 107.33, tab to the account, and either find the correct account with the down arrows or start typing the account or the account number. Down arrow, find the seeds. That's the hard way of doing it or start typing seeds and plants, or start typing 6015. It'll take you to the same place. Enter a memo, seeds for 2020 crops, and save. You can see that the charge has been entered into the register. To enter a credit card credit, Use the same method as with credit card charges. In the Enter Credit Card Charges window, 
click the Credit button. Credit card credits are easy. Let's say that some seeds in your order were backordered and would not get to you in time for planting. You cancel that part of the order and get a credit of $39.55. Open the window the same way you would for charges. Fill in the payee. Here QuickBooks auto-fills the window with the data from the last transaction entered with this vendor. Change the date. The amount. The correct account is already selected. The memo. Credit on cancelled order. Now click Credit. Click Save or press the Enter key. You've entered a credit. Let's close this window and see that the credit has been entered into the register as a payment, a decrease in the amount you owe. In the next video, we will talk about how to create invoices.